Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, where, depending on where you are. Welcome to this new episode of the Food Systems Talks. I am Mary Kenny, a member of the Secretariat of the Issue-Based Coalition on Sustainable Food Systems in Europe and Central Asia. And I'm the Food Safety and Consumer Protection Officer at FAO's Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia. I also coordinate our program of work on um, transforming food systems and facilitating uh, market access and integration. Today, it's my pleasure to moderate this exciting food systems talk an initiative of the issue-based coalition on sustainable food systems. In this episode, the sixth episode of the food systems talk, we will be speaking with the UN Food Systems Summit, member state national convener from Finland. It is my great honor to talk today with Mr. Yeri Olila, advisor at the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry of Finland. We will gain a deeper understanding of the priorities and issues at stake in Finland as the food systems are sustainably being transformed. Through this talk with Mr. Olila, we will understand the important role also that the national convener plays. We will gain insights into Finland's experiences and strategies and understand more about the successes and challenges to date. A few weeks after the UN Food System Summit plus two foods uh, stock taking moment, the interview will offer important insights, I hope and believe to all of us. By showcasing Finland's journey and highlighting its interesting and innovative approaches, we hope the talk with the national convener can inspire other countries in Europe and Central Asia and beyond to take bold actions and adopt sustainable food systems practices, which are essential to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and, and 2030 Agenda. Jiri Alala has an education of both agricultural economist and journalist. He's been working in the agri-food businesses and policies throughout his career in Finland, journalist, communications manager, then Minister of Agriculture and Forestry for Prime Minister's Office, and abroad, OECD, FAO and the European Commission. Before taking the task of the UNFSS National Convener he worked as Director for International Affairs of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. A very well, warm welcome to Mr. Yeri Olila. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. It was a great pleasure for, for the entire delegation of my country to participate in the uh, stock-taking moment uh, in Rome uh, a few weeks ago. Finally, meet colleagues and friends uh, uh, physically, face-to-face, -face, discuss and develop ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Olila, really a very well warm welcome again. Indeed, we were together in Rome. It's it's almost it's exactly a month ago, the 24th to 26th of July 2023. We were there for the UN uh, Food Systems Summit stock taking moment. We were not alone. The event was really big, as we know. The event brought together over uh, 2,000 people from all parts of the world, uh, including six heads of state and over 100 prime ministers, ministers and deputy ministers. In total, delegations from over 180 countries were present. Uh, through the stock taking moment, uh, we could see that there was really, again, significant attention focused and a renewed focus on the importance of food systems transformation necessary for the 2030 agenda achievement. We know that food systems transformation is not easy. In fact, it uh, can be complex. 
and and it requires a continuous process uh, with short term actions, but also long term uh, commitment of all stakeholders to achieve incremental progress towards a common vision. Last month at the stock taking moment, we also saw and received over 100 national voluntary progress reports um, from countries. They were submitted and many good practices emerging from the actions being taken at country level were shared. Everyone agrees that we, in order to accelerate uh, food systems transformation at national, regional and global levels, it is also really helpful to share knowledge and experiences through peer-to-peer -peer engagement and cooperation. And this is why we are here today. Finland has been actively engaged in this process. And my first question to you, Mr. Olilla, is, is really to, to ask you from the Finnish perspective, how do you see the relevance and impact of the stock taking moment outcomes and what key insights or lessons has Finland's, Finland's delegation gained in the pursuit of sustainable food systems? Indeed, will there be any changes in your national pathways implementation? Uh, let me first say that our general remark was that the analysis is there and crystal, crystal clear. The tools and solutions are there for a transformation and to a great deal also potential financial resources are there and what is not now needed uh, as repeatedly said during the meeting is political will and courage uh, to make choices and decisions that are sometimes painful maybe. For Finland's part <clears throat> along with the political program of the new government um, more attention will be paid on uh, ensuring production and improving production efficiency and profitability, research and information, innovation. Furthermore, security of supply and resilience are key words of the world of today, as we all know. Uh, if I could further develop um, on your question, I guess uh, we all working in the food systems policies have traditionally a similar difficulty or challenge that the general public and the general politicians do not feel that much being a part of a food systems and having a, the responsibility of being involved. But the, uh, the uh, stock taking moment and all the masses of information and data available thanks to the FSS process will certainly be helpful for all of us in convincing colleagues and leaders of our countries and of uh, other sectors to take the food issue uh, on board. And Thank you, Mr. Lilla. As a follow-up question, are there any really specific lessons learned? You said there was a lot of information shared, a lot of uh, great data and evidence coming uh, to the forefront, but any specific lessons learned from the stock taking moment you can share with other countries uh, so that other countries can embrace similar transformative actions? Um, I would say one lesson is that um, food systems issue is not a sectoral uh, or agricultural policy issue, but a societal, uh, national, global, and uh, to, uh, to a large extent an existential issue that's, that must, must be taken seriously and in urgency. We heard voices of some he heads of states uh, of uh, small distant countries where the food issue is in the center of their daily policies and uh, climate change is there already. I, uh, I wish uh, the message from the stock taking uh, would get attention 
of our leaders also in the wealthy, con wealthy countries of ours. Thank you. Thanks for sharing those reflections um, as a result of Finland's uh, active participation at this stock taking moment. Let us switch our focus a little bit to regional collaboration. In addition to global, global collaboration is really important, but in, in fact, uh, how, do we, how do we look at it at the, the regional level of Europe and Central Asia? In your opinion, how critical is regional collaboration and discussion for achieving shared sustainability goals in our region of Europe and Central Asia? Um, sustainable development has no limits and frontiers. It is a, a common issue. Every country has to do its share, but no country will be able to act or be successful uh, alone. Collaboration and coordination is necessary. Common effort in scientific work, agreeing on rules and regulations, standards and monitoring, logistics, trade, uh, you name it. To this end, in the case of Finland, uh, being a member state of the European Union, we have tremendous opportunities for collaboration, uh, synergies of common efforts and so on. And we sure seize this opportunity. And uh, I should mention at the smaller circle, long tra tradition with uh, uh, Nordic cooperation has proven to be extremely efficient way to share and work. We are, after all, rather similar societies, all five uh, Nordic countries. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like now to, if we could discover uh, a little bit more, uh, go deeper into the, the Finnish work and your ongoing work on uh, national pathways. You already mentioned yourself the importance or the the spotlight now on on resilience. Um, similar to many countries in our region and 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 beyond, uh, countries need to adapt to the concurrent shocks um, of the moment of the day, including the COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, the impacts of the war in Ukraine, and the um, ongoing climate crisis. So how does um, a country like Finland manage uh, to maintain food systems transformation, the journey of transformation during such challenging times? And what examples of strategies in the country uh, can you share with us that have been adopted to ensure the continuous supply chain, um, also managing uh, some disruptions maybe you've observed or changes during the last year. And in fact, through these, through living these changes and these multiple crises, does it make holistic uh, food systems approach, this approach even more relevant today? Um, let me uh, begin with something uh, we think uh, to have already um, well in place. Uh, namely, the first asset in our food systems mentioned in, in, in the National Pathway document uh, was the well-thought and well-functioning system of securing the availability of necessary supplies. We have uh, the, uh, a government agency called National Emergency Supply a Agency. Um, and it is it organizes and coordinates uh, the preparedness of supply of energy, food, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, uh, basic electronic components, all products that are considered to be uh, vital in any circumstances. And a uh, central principle is a uh, close cooperation with the industries and trade businesses to a pooling of responsibilities. The uh, system is financed by a, a small share in the electric taxation, and this uh, system we have has proven to be cost efficient and serves well in its uh, purpose. 
And of course, as you mentioned, uh, a consequence, uh, as a consequence of the war in Ukraine, Russia's unprovoked uh, attack on Ukraine, the relevance of such an arrangement is even more valid and valued amongst uh, political circle, circles and especially amongst the general public. So what I hear there is having a plan and, and, and coordination, being prepared and, and coordination seems to be a, a key part there of uh, your resilience and being able to adapt to, to, to impacts or changes in terms uh, and impacts in the, on the, the foods, uh, the food system. Um, let us focus a bit uh, more now on, on healthy diets and, and even looking at, uh, climate change. And we know that Finland has been, uh, is known for its forward thinking uh, policies and innovative uh, solutions. Um, and I'd like you to reflect and, and maybe give us one example of a, a key policy that you have in Finland to promote uh, sustainable production and consumption uh, with reference to the, the promotion of healthy diets. And if you could also share with us another policy action or policy area to address climate change. What are some of the important policy actions in, in Finland in these two key aspects or key areas of our, of our food systems? Uh, with pleasure. Um, on the sustainable production first, uh, uh, we are a dairy country. Yeah. Our climate and soil is best suitable for dairy production. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, animal, animal production and especially ruminants are uh, in the spotlight uh, when it comes to climate action. Uh, we think to have a very developed and skilled dairy production and we want to continue to be on the top of uh, dairy countries. Therefore, um, there is a collaborative endeavor by the main dairy cooperative, uh, inputs industries, and a number of research institutions to adapt our dairy production to the climate targets with the aim of zero net carbon footprint for the entire dairy system in 2035. Ambitious target. <clears throat> and it is about improvements through animal breeding, changes in agronomic patterns, in growing grass, in use of organic soils, innovations in animal feeding and ruminants uh, metabolism, use of manure-based feeding, uh, manure-based uh, bioenergy on farms, in hauling and delivery of uh, transports, in processing of dairy products and so on. It is a realistic effort and on track towards the target of 2035. Uh, so dairy, we see dairy as a great potential uh, also in, in this uh, uh, endeavor to, uh, to reach the SDGs. On the consumption and nutrition and diets, um, another example, uh, there is a long and uh, renewed tradition of dietary recommendation on Nordic level and on the national level. Just recently, uh, in June, the Nordic uh, nutrition recommendations were updated. The work is done uh, by a panel of scientific experts, by the very best in the five Nordic countries, having the latest scientific li literature from all over the world at their disposal. What is new this time? The recommendations include aspects of not only nutrition and health as such, but also aspects of overall sustainability, 
climate, environment, societal justice, and affordability. I have heard that the work wasn't easy and without controversies, but the end result is said to be of the highest class. It really is seen as a global benchmark in nutrition, and you might want to check it on the web pages of the Nordic Council of Ministers. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Olila. This is uh, both examples were very, very interesting. Um, very interesting. I didn't know that you had this, like that the, the dietary guidelines are the same across the all the Nordic countries. That's what I've understood from you. Yeah. So they yeah. are on the same scientific basis, but yeah. they are adapted uh, in, in each of the country according to the uh, sort of production and consumption in our environment. Okay, so yes, I know. They're, okay, you have a central approach, and then they are they are adapted then to each of the individual countries in the in the Nordic group. But very interesting to hear that you have, as you explained, added in the sustainability questions as well as well now about uh, what guidance you're giving uh, to consumers. Um, and and you said it was a, not an easy uh, discussion. And um, in fact, in your prior example with the dairy sector, which uh, is also another very, very interesting example, I'm sure that wasn't all what there's difficult discussions uh, at stake uh, on that one as well. And if I may, I'm I just a, a very small additional question uh, is I was interested in how are you in Finland engaging with the with this with the farmers? How is the mechanism to have the view and the the farmers at the table as part of this uh, discussion on the future of the dairy sector? Is it through cooperatives or how do you how do you get organized in that way? Um, on the sort of uh, policy front, we have a long tradition uh, in our country and also in, in, in I would say in the Nordic countries uh, a tradition of uh, consultation and concertation mm -hmm. uh, in all preparatory work for for uh, legislative reforms and so on. So that is a sort of uh, 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 inbuilt element of of any pol policy work. Uh, especially in the food systems reform, of course, farmers, uh, food industries, consumers, environmental uh, 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 action groups and uh, um, health and nutrition specialists and so on are uh, an integral part of, of, uh, of this discussion uh, always. And in fact, I, I have to admit that uh, setting the FSS dialogue process uh, on uh, wasn't that difficult because of this tradition. Um, that is how uh, policies are uh, are made, uh, and uh, people are uh, and uh, stakeholders are heard in in uh, in all stages of the uh, poli political processes. Good, thank you. So I guess the through the continuing work of the food systems transformation. It enables you to to go deeper, I guess, in these uh, consultative uh, discussions and and information exchange. Um, so this is uh, really really excellent examples. Thank you, thank you for sharing those uh, from the Finnish perspective, but also giving us an insight also into the work of the the Nordic Council and uh, the cooperation in in the Nordic region. I'd like now to uh, switch the theme a little bit again to to let's talk a little bit about technology more and innovation. And again, during the um, UN Food System Summit uh, stock taking moment, uh, we learned a lot and we heard a lot of examples about the crucial role of uh, digitalization, 
science and innovation to advance uh, food systems transformation. And we know that Finland has a, a reputation for, embr for embracing technology and uh, digitalization. So just in a, in, a, in a brief way, how has the digital transformation contributed to the food systems transformation path? And what, what does that mean to the, the farmers and, and the food industry that you, you mentioned uh, also a few minutes ago? Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot has been said about it, about the digitalization during the uh, stop taking moment and before. Uh, it is clear that uh, digital tools and will, they will boost our all activities of our food systems, production technologies, monitoring and control, trade, logistics. <clears throat> but I would like to raise one aspect, which I personally think to be potentially a revolutionary uh, development uh, in the years to come, uh, which I also mentioned in one of the sessions in Rome, uh, the digital revolution will certainly affect also our consumption patterns in a uh, pro pro profound manner. New types of delivery, enormous spectrum of choice, physical uh, distances disappearing, possibilities to purchase direct from the producer uh, or pro processor wherever uh, in the world you may find one of your pre preferences. On the other hand, digital home delivery restoration, restoration services may make dietary choices on your behalf uh, without letting you uh, much choice. But this can also be combined with individually tailored digital advice from your trusted dietary consultant, uh, certified environmental and climate and ethics advice. Uh, and thus, uh, be more trustful and smarter uh, than than before as a as a uh, global citizen. All this can soon be every everyday practice uh, with the help of digital platforms of sales and delivery. And also, I can see that there is a possibility that that the consumer finally can be genuinely uh, uh, the king each one being the king uh, could also mean that food markets will be more democratic and equitable if only carefully structured and duly controlled. So digitalization is not only sort of uh, engineering device for production efficiency and lowering costs, but it certainly will uh, affect our consumption patterns and the whole spectrum of, of, of food systems. But it, there is great potential, but also has to be smartly controlled and, and uh, administrated, structured. Thank you. So you're part of your vision there. There's many aspects you covered in your in your in your reply but uh, part of it also puts a spotlight on a, a a vision for more informed uh consumers and the consumer mm -hmm. as king as you said in terms of making better choices uh for themselves for their own health uh but also uh for for our planet and a, a final question, uh, Mr. Olila. Uh, the, during the stock taking moment and previously and even, and even uh, up to this day, the, the UN Secretary General emphasized the need for a stronger multilateral cooperation and, and indeed a people centered approach. 
and highlighted also the importance of partnerships to achieve sustainable uh, the sustainable development goals. So what in the Finnish context, what is the recipe and experience in Finland to bring all stakeholders uh, on this journey of transformation, including those who are more marginalized and living in remote rural areas, for example? Yes, indeed. Finland is a rather scarcely populated country uh, and the northernmost agricultural country in the world. Um, uh, Helsinki, the capital, is, uh, I would say, the only really urban area, but 20 minutes drive uh, from Helsinki city center, you are really in the uh, forest, rural environment. Um, going deeper into the rural Finland, uh, life and livelihood, of course, is uh, in some degree more limited in the modern sense. Uh, we have a long tradition of regional policies in our country. Um, the aim has always been to keep the entire country inhabited. Uh, there is a uh, clear national security motive behind, has always been, and you will well understand why it is still there, a, 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 um, a central motive uh, for, for uh, regional policies. Um, this is why poli political decision maker, makers have uh, traditionally uh, listened carefully the voices of rural rural people. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a tradition of consultation and cons cons consultation, and uh, that certainly will will uh, uh, will not be abundant uh, uh, and uh, will will be a, a backbone to keep the society uh, uh, united and uh, well um, in all circumstances. Um, I I think uh, the uh, FSS uh, dialogue process was uh, sort of it fortified very much this need for bringing all aspects uh, on the uh, discussion table. And uh, this is uh, seen as a very helpful uh, uh, addition to, to our, our tradition. We, uh, we will certainly uh, pay attention, any kind of government will, uh, will pay attention to, to this. Uh, here again, I, I, I have to mention that the modern information and communication technologies and digitalization will be helpful, helpful as well. Um, um, yeah, no, as you say, Finland is a, is a, is a long and a, a quite a big country. So with, with a sparse, uh, sparsely populated. So indeed, uh, as you, as you highlight the the importance of uh, modern technologies and, and communication methods will also uh, can also play a strong role there in in, in keeping uh, continuing to work at this uh, on this people centered approach, which seems to be a a, a key part of your uh, regional policies and and regional approaches as you as you highlighted to us, Mr. Lillo. We are going to now uh, wrap up our food systems uh, talk with you as the national convener uh, of Finland. We've delved into the core outcomes, some of the core outcomes of the UN food systems uh, uh, stock taking moment just a month ago. Um, we've shed light and uh, on some of the crucial steps 
uh, important uh, that have been completed in Finland, uh, important in your country. Um, but also, I think some of the point you've raised points that you see are also important to advance global food systems uh, sustainability. Mr. Lilla, I would like to extend uh, my gratitude and our gratitude to you for the inspiring uh, conversation. Your insights have truly enriched our understanding of the Finnish path, the Finnish context towards sustainable food systems, um, and really what you have taken or what you, how you are building on the outcomes of the uh, UN Food System Summit stock taking uh, moment. It was my great honor and pleasure to, to be, be uh, uh, invited to this uh, uh, discussion. Uh, in this uh, context, I would like to extend my uh, thanks to all you people working in the international organizations for this extremely important uh, task of uh, sustainable development and food systems uh, transformation. Um, we are dealing with uh, uh, key questions of humanity when working for, for the improving uh, food systems of ours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Olilla. And it's just left to me to invite all our listeners to please visit the uh, website of the issue-based issue -based coalition on sustainable food systems in Europe and Central Asia. On our website, you will see uh, this. Uh, you can watch this talk and other talks that we have completed in the series. And you can have, uh, you will find there also more updates and insights into our uh, joint work. Thank you very much uh, for listening.